Hello, welcome to our show, Lila's News. I'm Roberta Fresco and I'm at IBM Brazil. And my guests today are Fred Palboni, he's global leader for business analytics and optimization service, and also Leandro Andardi, who is associate partner for analytics for telecom at IBM, right? That's right. So nice to have you here. Good afternoon. Yeah. So I'd like to start about uh, I'd like to ask you to give an overview about how carriers around the world are embracing telecom analytics. Well, the exciting thing about telco analytics, especially in the, in the uh, for carriers, is that we see uh, carriers around the world taking two major approaches, or using analytics to affect their business in two major ways. The first way is around using it to become more efficient in their operations and, and using analytics to really manage the cost element. And this is, a, this is a really interesting discussion because part of it is that the benefit and usage of telco is of analytics is becoming a well-known tool to most of the people in the business and in, in carriers. Carriers recognize that they can now use it to understand consumer behavior, network behavior, financial performance, HR behavior, even their supply chain for physical goods and, uh, and operations, um, and, and actually also asset management. So what's happening is the notion of analytics is growing everywhere, and so it's no longer a locked up secret sitting in finance. And so what's happening is companies are using analytics to get cost out of their business because this thing is growing like that and they, they've got to manage the cost. So we're getting more efficient using that. The other thing carriers are using analytics for is to grow revenue. And that that is the exciting thing. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Yeah, because we, we've been talking about carriers using analytics forever. But I've been reading and writing and intervening about uh, maybe a turning point that carriers are embracing more and different kinds of analytics tools so they can improve the, the cost efficiency and also to better meet customers' demands. And how, how's that change? Well, there are a couple of key components to this that are important. First of all is getting the foundation data and information together is really important getting singular, federated view, or consolidated view of customers, because you can understand customer behaviors through the different types of you know, wireline, wireless, cable, data, all the different product sets, and understand consumer behavior, consumer channels. The thing that's really important in this customer experience is how do customers want to be served? Like, how do they want to change? Do they want to be you know, a mobile device? Do they want to talk to them on the web? Do they want to call a call center? Do they want to go into a retail branch? So kind of that dimension. The second major area is to is, is really the uh, visualization. A lot of really exciting work going on in advanced visualization. So how you visualize information to, to operationalize decisions. And then the third area is this area of core analytics engines. Predictive, prescriptive analytics, insight analytics, fraud analytics, so the engines that sit between the core data and the visualization layer, uh, a lot of growth in that area as well. So that's, that's the way we think about it. And Leandro, uh, how, how do you see Brazilian carriers adopting those tools? I mean, um, are we be behind uh, worldwide carriers? Uh, what do you think? No, I, I would say that it's not so different to what Fred has just mentioned to us. In Brazil, Brazilian companies, telecommunication uh, companies, are amongst the, 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 the companies in Brazil that most invest in, in analytics and, and analytics capabilities for them. And uh, the reason why is that because they have a huge amount of data to, to work on, to, to investigate, to understand them, to have a, a deeper understanding on customer behavior and how they can leverage the results using that information um, here in Brazil. So that's why I don't think that we are behind the other companies around the world. So it's, we are, uh, I think, uh, telecommunications companies in Brazil are pretty much in the same level, same level. Of, the other of course that 
uh, there are companies that are more coordinated, that, that, that they have, that, that have more coordination in terms of how to use or how to invest on analytics capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so some companies are more developed than, than, than others. But in, gen in general, I mean, I think we are pretty much in the same problem, just in the same level. And do you agree that in more competitive environments or in a prepaid competitions, carriers tend to adopt those analytics before uh, in other uh, environments? No, I, I, I think that due to this uh, competitive environment, uh, companies are investing more and more in analytics. So not only analytics to understand patterns or, 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 or customer behavior to understand to, to de develop new products, but also to develop uh, specific and relevant offers uh, in the real time uh, um, operational systems. So uh, companies are understanding customer behavior, try to understand which of which of which of the their products or the relevant services that they have that are most suitable to each one of the customers, and they, they, they are using that information to leverage results, to leverage sales to those customers. It's similar to what you were saying about being predictive. Well, I think predictive is, is very important. Some of this stuff is, you don't even need to be predictive. You can actually understand through consumer behavior because you, you can understand exactly what they're doing. What are the channels they, they go to? And uh, they know how they want to be served. And you can, you can see the data will show you that absolutely immediately. The interesting thing is that what we're finding is that is that predictive then creates the next set of opportunities because not only do you understand how someone wants to be served, not only do you understand how they operate, you also understand that people with very similar characteristics are most likely to, for example, if, they, if you serve them in two channels or they buy two products from you, the, this is what it takes to get them to buy three products. And so you there can be predictive in what offers you make to them. Engineering that intelligence into the way you have a, a customer carrier dance allows, allows the carrier to get uplift in sales, but it also allows the customer to feel very happy with the level of service because you're putting an offer in front of them. Wow, I do want one. So they, they're happy to have the offer, and it's viewed as customer service. Um, the reality of it is, is incremental, incremental sales. Lead us to Big Data Analytics, which is uh, boosting telecom nowadays. Um, how do you, what do you think is going to happen regarding telecom analytics, uh, adopt, carriers adopting telecom analytics? So Big Data Analytics is, is a great new opportunity. And I'm, I want to talk about it because in the area of customer management, I mean, we could talk about big data analytics, and, let's say HR or fraud, but let's talk about it in customer management because I think that's the one that's got everyone excited. Uh, first of all, let's understand that I think big data analytics has two kind of dimensions. The first one is understanding the patterns in microscopic detail of transactions that we normally, we may not even put in the database. We might just summarize and discard. Or you archive it, you consolidate it to a bigger number, and you archive it. Let me give you a simple example. Do we track uh, uh, a mobile device going from one cell tower to another cell tower to another cell tower? Or do we track that information? Do we track every single call data record and consolidate every call data record? Or do we summarize it for the day and add it to our billing system? Because what we're doing is when we can start tracking this detailed information, we're now understanding the patterns of our consumers. So that's one dimension of big data analytics. And the second dimension of big data analytics that's so important is understanding what our consumers customers are saying in the marketplace, social media, uh, and, and, and external data sources, such as news feeds, financial data, 
weather data. Now what we begin to do in this is that we're now taking customer attributes and originally we used to think of customer attributes as name, address, maybe, maybe, maybe where they live, yeah. uh, maybe their marital status, maybe we had their income status, but now let's add to that how they buy, which of the carrier's products and services do they buy, which options do they buy, how many different things do they get from us. Then you add to that the dimensions of external information, financial, weather. Uh, uh, you put uh, everything you know, together so to analyze it. You to analyze each customer yeah. behavior. And then you can add social media to fill in things like what are their political preferences? What are their, what, what sports do they prefer? All, so then what you'll be able to do is you can now look at your customer base in very good detail and you suddenly realize that you have a segment of 75 customers that all, 75 customers that we know if they buy cable and they buy internet cable, high speed internet from us, and they buy uh, uh, wireless, they are probably going to buy, if they would be interested in buying, uh, international roaming. I mean, it's really interesting. You understand where your sales opportunities are. That's where big data creates a big payoff because you can actually create not individual profiles, but profiles of very small groups. And then they become targeted marketing opportunities for growth of the business. And I have two questions regarding that. The first one, uh, are Kerry really adopting this already or are, are we going to see over the next years? And the second one is regarding privacy. So how to secure customers' privacy when you analyze all of this data? So let's, let's, start, with the, uh, let's start with the privacy issue. The privacy issue is, uh, you know, I think that, that, that every single company that works in the space, uh, we describe what we call the creepy factor which is being an offer made to you that, that you, you're not interested in. And by the way, how did you know that? You know, I'm going to tell you something. It really bothers me personally to, uh, that uh, my email provider sent, has advertisements about, my about cycling. I love bicycling. And all my personal emails from my, all my friends are my cyclists. And now all of a sudden I'm getting advertisements about cycling. That's a bit creepy. That's invasive. So I think what every single company does is when they do this, they first of all, they anonymize the data. Uh, because uh, most of the internal leaks, you don't, you want to protect your privacy. So we anonymize the data. So what you're doing is every single person, like you personally, you're just a number. Take away your person, your address, your details of that, um, but all the other characteristics of you are okay because it's not about you as a person. It's about you as a serial number, and you, it's not about you as an address. It's about you as a serial number that lives in a locale. So I think you've got to, and we've been very strict on to make sure that none of our clients and telcos have got to take very extraordinary care that they do anonymize the data, but they have enough so, they can do it so that they can, they can do that and they can market to those markets. So, so that's, that's a very important deliberate steps that you have to take. Um, the other thing that you answer, the other question you ask is, I mean, you can use this to create incremental, in, incremental growth if you, if you do it properly. How do you do it? Step by step. So that starts with a commitment to customer-oriented analytics. Once you say, I want to do customer-oriented analytics, I want to do promotions and marketing and use this to generate revenue, then you go down to very small segments, and I want to do that. The way you start to do that is through this dynamic segmentation, big data process. So they have to start 
start uh, uh, small projects and then becoming uh, increasing and enlarging this project. Exactly. This is not like one project and yeah. it's done. This is the beginning of a transformation of growth. In Brazil it's the same. Yes, for sure. I mean, all the impacts the whole community around the world will impact the community here in Brazil as well. But let's, let's consider as well that by having this information, creators have the, the, the possibility to improve the customer experience. Uh, so it, it may have a huge impact on customer experience, on customer satisfaction, and as a consequence on the uh, company's results. So let's take as an example, for instance, if the, the operator uh, uses the information that is stored in the recorded calls to the call center, when a customer calls the call center, you complain about something or, or require, uh, require something, what would be the impact if the operator could have access in the transcription of all of those uh, uh, messages and understand what would be customer's demands? I mean, today they already have the information that the, the, the customer uh, uh, representative, representative of the operator is taking uh, from the, the conversation. But what if the, the what if assistance assistant could interpret that information and, and generate um, big insights for the operator? to improve their customer services, to improve their quality, to design new, product, new products based on that information. So, of course, that the operator has to take care and to, to work with, um, um, work carefully uh, regarding uh, customer uh, privacy. But they already do that. They already have enough information and, and, and very sensitive information about their customers. And they have process to secure that. And, you know, we, we just finished a project where, with uh, with uh, one operator that um, it, when a call comes into the call center from the caller ID, it instantly has a screen. So we've set up a structure which says this person has had high call dropouts or had engineering problems with their handset. They instantly know what kind of handset it is. And so instead of having to, it says the highest probability is this person has an engineering problem with a certain, I'm going to say iPhone. And so it's going to go to a specialist immediately in that call center. And then the chances are that call, that problem can get resolved in the first call. Really interesting. So if we actually put that level of analytic intelligence into the customer experience. So I, I mean, some of this stuff is not like not really rocket science new. It's taking things that we all know as common sense and just putting it into the processes we do today. Yes, and and when we see the monitor and when the markets are beginning to be saturated, how co carriers treat their customers will be key in the future. Absolutely. Well, I'd like to thank you all for joining the interview. And I'd like to thank you for watching CRSA Wireless News. Follow us at rsawireless.com.